Let's talk about the miracle that was Elias Pettersson at fifth overall. And you know what? I'm going to call myself out on that one. It's not even just fifth overall that I think is all too important to talk about here. Just Elias Pettersson as a whole being taken by the Vancouver Canucks is great. And because we're talking about stuff that isn't really all too newsworthy, it's just stuff that I want to ramble about, I feel the necessary impulse to go out there and just start rambling on about what was the Elias Pettersson story at the 2017 NHL Entry Draft. Now, I will say, a lot of this does have to come off of what Petey said on Spit and Chicklets earlier, and before we proceed, we're not getting into the whole debate on whether or not it was good or bad or whatever that Petey was on Spit and Chicklets. I know some people on Twitter made a really big deal about that, but we're not talking about that here. The fact is, he was on there, and therefore, we can talk about what he said. So, I was listening to the episode, loved seeing what Elias Pettersson had to say about his overall situation as a hockey player, building his brand, fashion, all that stuff, but probably the most interesting thing that I picked up from the entire Pettersson interview was what exactly happened before he got drafted in 2017. Because he spoke about how before the draft actually took place, there were only two teams that took him out, flew him out to their cities, and spent some time with him. One of them was the Vancouver Canucks, and he noted a few hints that he was given as to what would happen before he gets drafted, which is why when he eventually was picked by Vancouver, he wasn't super surprised. But he noted how the other team that flew him out, and that spent some time with him, was the Toronto Maple Leafs. Now, this video isn't me saying anything about Pedersen going to the Leafs soon or whatever. It's just talking about what could have been and what the Toronto Maple Leafs might have actually done in terms of if they had the choice to take who they wanted to take at their 17th overall spot. Because, taking a look at Toronto, it's fair to say, okay, maybe Toronto is just one of those teams that has so much money to burn that they fly out anybody that they have remote interest in. Therefore, it might not be super significant to say that Toronto flew out PD and they introduced him to the city. Because, hey, you can say a similar thing about Vancouver. The fact is, Vancouver had their own interviews, their own flyout dinners and all that that have been leaked to the media over the past few years. I remember last year, it was a big deal that Peyton Krebs, Trevor Zegras, and Alex Newhook were introduced to Vancouver. I believe they went out to dinner or something, and none of those guys ended up getting taken by the Canucks. So, obviously, this is just one small interaction when you take a look at the big picture, but I just wanted to talk talk a little bit about the Toronto Maple Leafs and whether or not Pedersen could have been on their sites. Because, firstly, there would probably have not been a chance for Toronto to even draft Pedersen in the first place. Toronto's first round pick in the 2017 NHL entry draft was at 17th overall. Where they went with that 17th overall pick? Leafs fans, you kind of know where we're going here. We're talking about Timothy Liljegren, a really good right-handed defenseman prospect who, at a time, was ranked to being one of the top guys in the 2017 draft. He kind of just slipped down to draft rankings as the year went on. So, if we go off of the assumption that Toronto was interested in Pedersen from what Pedersen said on his little interview, we could gather that, hey, if Pedersen was available at 17, who knows if Toronto would have pulled the trigger. But, as we have noted in a few videos in the past, that probably would not have happened. We've noted how in the past the Detroit Red Wings were really high on Elias Pettersson. We noted in the past how the New York Rangers traded up to 7th overall with the Arizona Coyotes, with the intention of taking Pedersen, but nah, that didn't happen because Jim Benning and his crew ended up staying at 5th and they took Pedersen there. We spoke additionally about the idea of the Vancouver Canucks trading down in the draft, either to 6th overall with the Vegas Golden Knights or to 8th overall with the Buffalo Sabres. They were in a position to say this because they kind of knew that none of the other teams were interested in Petey up until Arizona traded down and New York traded up. Because the trade up from New York was the entire wild card there. So when Petey wasn't there for New York, they ended up taking their second option, which was Leish Anderson, which is another Swedish center that they did scout in that time frame. So you could definitely see the corroborations there. And you could definitely say a similar kind of thing about the Toronto Maple Leafs, because Timothy Lilligren, obviously, he's a Swedish guy as well. In 2017, Lilligren was playing in the SHL as well as the Allsvenskan. The Allsvenskan was the league that Elias Pettersson was playing for. In fact, Lilligren played with Timra, which was Pettersson's team. So it makes perfect sense that the guy whom they eventually did take 
was in the ballpark, was in quite literally the same arena for a few games as the guy whom they flew out to Toronto, who was eventually drafted by the Vancouver Canucks, and who is today one of the hottest young stars in the National Hockey League. Now again, it's probably unlikely to say that Pedersen would have been available anywhere at 17th overall. But if you're that interested in a guy, you take your chances, right? Plus, there's still that whole idea that we spoke about earlier, whether or not Toronto just has a whole bunch of money to shell out. That that's completely my own speculation. I know that might not be something that a lot of people agree with. But going over what Elias Pettersson was projected towards being at the draft, some people had him as a top 20 guy, like ISS, they had him at 20th overall. Others had him a little bit higher than that. 8th by Future Considerations, 11th by McKean's, 7th by TSN and Bob McKenzie, and he was the second best European skater by NHL Central Scouting. Who was number one? Well, you're going to be surprised about this one, it wasn't Miro Heiskanen, it wasn't that Timothy Lilligren, it was actually Klim Kostan, who, yeah, you kind of know who this guy is, right? He's the guy who kind of yelled F you to the crowd in Vancouver at the World Juniors. Yeah, we're not going to talk about that, but... Pedersen was second, Leish Anderson was actually third, Heiskinen was fourth on this list for European skaters, which is absolutely incredible. A few picks down, you have that Timothy Lilligren, who did suit up with Pedersen, with Timra, and who had his own path carved in the SHL too. But you know, I'm not done talking about this topic yet. Because this is just a video of me rambling about Pedersen, let's go over the hypotheticals, shall we? Let's say ISS is correct. Their assessment of Pedersen being a top 20 guy is accurate, and it actually plays out that way. And let's say the Toronto Maple Leafs go out there, and they pick this guy up at 17th overall. You know what that kind of reminds me of? It reminds me of that Rodion Amirov pick that we saw earlier at this year's draft. Now, Amirov did not have the production that Elias Pettersson did in his draft year, that's for sure. But the fact is, Rodion Amirov was a European guy who exhibited a lot of skill and who, in the minds of many people, was an underrated pick. Some people had Amirov as the guy to break what was considered to be the unbreakable, consolidated top 10. In real life, we saw guys like Jack Quinn, for example, break that top 10. But I, alongside of many other people, believed that... Amirov could have been that guy, and that situation to me kind of reminds me of Pedersen. Not the players, of course. I don't think the potentials and the ceilings of Amirov and Pedersen align, but I'm talking about the situation as a whole. The fact is, Toronto is not afraid to go over to Europe and take a look at some high upside guys. Guys who aren't really guaranteed to being anything, but if they do hit, they do hit hard. And if you have an Elias Pettersson already on a squad that had Mitch Marner, Matthews, Tavares eventually, ooh my gosh, talk about spending a huge portion of your cap on four guys. How about five? Because Elias Pettersson is in a position where his next contract is going to be for 2021, 2022, and beyond. If it's Toronto, my gosh, they're going to have to move a whole bunch of money, or they might just move out the guy entirely because, man, all this money combined into high-skilled players, it's astronomical. And we know here in Vancouver, there are already some preconceived problems, potential issues as to what's going to happen with the rest of this team when Petey and Hughes need contract extensions at the same time. Ah, oh, that's going to be a lot. But... At the end of the day, if you're paying your players a lot, it generally means you have good players. And I say generally because we see a lot of players in the NHL, on the Vancouver Canucks specifically too, who have boatloads of money attached to their names, but who just don't really play all too well. Cough, cough, Louis Erickson. But with that concluded, it kind of wraps up my entire video here. I don't even know what this was about, man. Honestly, this started out as a commentary talking about Elias Pettersson and how he was only flown out to two teams, Vancouver and Toronto. We went into the hypotheticals as to Toronto actually being involved in Pettersson. We went over why that wouldn't have happened, because Detroit, because New York were involved in this process to snag him away, but it didn't work because Vancouver was up there at fifth overall. And at the end of the day, you know, I'm just really happy that things went the way they were because, hey, Elias Pettersson is undisputably one of the top two, if not the number one player of the 2017 NHL entry draft. You could debate him or McCarr, to be honest, but the fact is, franchise-defining centermen are rare. And every day, I thank my lucky stars that three years ago at the 2017 draft, we heard Jim Benning call out Peterson's name instead of Cody Glass, Casey Middlestad, any of the other guys who could have been available at that spot. 
Talk to me in the comments what you think about this video. I do hope you enjoyed this video. Show that's Ross 99. Sorry if I wasted your time. This was just a ramble. It wasn't really all too coherent. And bye.